Hi guys, and welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to show you real quick how to properly fix your machine to a board. Now, I know that this might sound a little bit pointless, uh, and that's because of the apparent simplicity of the process, but this is actually one of the most important things that you will need to do when you uh, start with a new machine. If you are planning to fix your machine uh, onto a board, which is something that, by the way, I normally uh, recommend. Now, properly fixing the machine to your board, it's what makes the difference between um, successful and unsuccessful engravings. And this will be more relevant or particularly noticeable when you start out with assembly type of projects. So that means projects where you're basically using your machine to carry out components, which will then assemble together to form products like, for example, my filter box over there, or more complicated, like this locomotive over here. And so the idea here is in order to preserve the shapes, that means um, if you design a square, you want to get a square, not a rhombus or a diamond. The thing is that you want the axis of your machine to be perfectly perpendicular. So this and this, or in other words, you can say uh, perfectly squared or to be at 90 degrees apart from one another. Now, the problem that I'm going to show you now uh, will be uh, applicable mostly to gauntry type of machines like this one. Now, this is the brand new NetJet 3 Pro. And so a gauntry type of machine is a machine where you have a pair of Y-axis, normally are these two, as you can see, and a single X-axis, which spans between the two Y-axis, on top of which then you will have the trolley with your laser module attached to it. And so this is the problem. Now, uh, for sake of demonstration, I have already fixed the machine over to this side, which is the front. And I'm going to get now the machine. All right, so I hope the camera can render that. You can see that the machine has quite a bit of flex in there, okay? And so that's exactly what I mean by properly fixing the machine. So you can see that on this particular model, we got like a centimeter of uh, uh, flexion either side. So that means a couple of centimeters in total. And so if you do not fix the machine properly now, all of the projects that you will be outputting, they will all be messed up, okay? Because imagine you are going now to, so imagine you are swaying over to the left, for example, you will basically get, uh, if you are engraving a square, you will get some kind of uh, uh, rhombos or uh, diamond, okay? And so you don't want to do that. Now, uh, this is why I'm saying that this is the most important things. Obviously, uh, depending on the structure and the connection system, some machine will flex less than others, but in general, you will have some degree of flexibility. Uh, now, before you even start uh, fixing your machine, you have to ensure that um, the two rails, they are running parallel. So you will want to adjust your timing belt uh, so that the gantry system it's running parallel on both sides and usually you can do that by taking one of the two sides as a reference for example you will push the machine all the way there okay it will touch on both sides then you will slack them and you will retention them accordingly so that they are going parallel uh, in this particular model you can slack this uh, connection uh, road over there and so you will let it settle and once both sides are touching and the timing belt is uh, appropriately tensioned then you can re-tighten this accordingly so now the process is very simple uh, 
First thing first, you will need to choose the type of board that you want to use. And for that, you can use anything you find fancy. Also, I would recommend you to go for MDF. And the reason for that is because MDF doesn't have any grain. Um, MDF is basically some sawdust compact together with some glue. And the thing is that if you don't have a grain and a layering system, uh, the, or the chance of a warpness or out of flatness, it's reduced, okay? So you will not have this unbalanced tension, which is dependent on the water content into the material. So you can be assured that the MDF will most likely be flat throughout, as long as you don't put it uh, outside uh, under the rain or something like that, okay? So this is a perfectly flat type of board. And so I think it's perfectly suitable for our application. Now, um, once you decide which board to go for, you will need to decide the dimension. That's obviously going to be di dictated by the uh, overall size of your machine. Third, you will need to choose where to place the machine. Now, with this machine, the Nejo 3 Pro, I know that there are attachments, accessories that can be connected over to the side. And so what I would want to do is to preserve a little bit more space over to my left side and therefore to push the machine rightwards, okay? And then the process for actually fixing the machine. So you want the board to be as square as possible. If it's not square, you will need to take some measurement and you can work yourself uh, with it. But uh, in my opinion, if you can get it square, so with perfect cuts, uh, that will easen up your job. Now, I know for sure that this board is perfectly squared because I'm ordering it from a local hardware store. They are cutting it out with a CNC cutter. So I'm 100% certain about the dimension and also everything else. Now, once you do that, you will want to get your one of the two hands to be perfectly parallel to one of your hedges. And so you can take a measuring tool like a ruler or uh, a meter, anything that you find fancy. You can also use a caliper and you will want to measure either from the railing or if like in this case, the support are flat and you see that they are both nicely and tight, you can basically use this one as a reference system and you want to measure whatever you want, like one centimeter, two centimeter, whatever you want really, okay? So you want to make sure that this side is parallel. The second thing that you want to do is over to this side instead, you will basically want to measure as well and to have a known dimension. I usually recommend going for some integer or easy fractions. So one centimeter, one and a half, two, two and a half, you, you got the idea. So that is very easy later on to measure it there without trying to pinpoll the millimeter or fraction of millimeters. You don't want to do that. Also, in all of this context of measurement, bear in mind that there will be some tolerance given by your measuring tool, first thing, and also uh, human error, so the tolerance given by you measuring uh, the distance there. So once this is done, take your brackets, mark them down, take the, I mean, the the marking for the hole, drill the hole, screw everything up and fix it to the machine. Next, you will want to go over to the other corner there and to apply the same distance that you applied here as a startup, okay? So you will take here, for example, it's two and a half. You will go there, you will measure two and a half. And after that, now if the machine is stable, you can leave it like this, no problem. Otherwise you will want to clamp it down temporarily with something just to prevent the machine from moving. Here is the most important part. In this uh, temporary um, condition, let's say, half fixed, you will want to run what I call a precision uh, um, test, which basically looks like this. Now I'll leave this small circle inside here. It looks like this. Uh, in general, it's basically uh, square with the two diagonals, okay? That's all you will basically need. 
Now I'm doing it a little bit more complicated so that I can have like double measurement. So you have this uh, two concentric inscribed squares and an inscribed circle plus the medium here. Doesn't matter. I mean, the important is that you will run this very quickly. You don't need to cut it. It's a simple engraving. Then you will take again the same measuring tool. Okay. And you will want to measure first the two diagonals. Okay. So you expect the two diagonal to be the same and then just for um, safety reason you can also measure the two uh, horizontal and vertical line and to make sure that they are pretty much all the same now if that is the case if everything is right you can go ahead mark down the point drill and fix your machine and you're good to go however if one of the two diagonal turns out to be longer than the other one, then you will need to adjust the machine and to repeat the same test. And so how are you going about it? Say for example, this line, this diagonal is longer, okay? So what that means is that the machine is currently swaying over to that side, okay? And so what you will want to do is to kick it a little bit from there so that the machine moves uh, leftward okay the other way around if this is the longer diagonal you will simply need to do the other and then to repeat the test until you don't get a perfect uh, square with the two equal diagonals okay so that's what you want to do once you're done with that you can then fix permanently your machine to the board and you are pretty much good to go and then you can be assured that all of your project will come out flawlessly without uh, problems, okay? Again, I want to re-emphasize just to make sure before to start with anything that the two axes here, they are running parallel. So I, you want to make sure that the gantry uh, runs by the same amount on either side of the machine. This is very important. And after that, you are basically uh, good to go, okay? and yeah this is basically the way to do it now for some of you uh might seem very simple uh like pointless discussion but um i know for experience that this is a very important process um also because once you have everything squared uh what i normally recommend is to run uh, an engraving project to create a grid so you will have a fixed uh, reference system onto your board and you it will be very easy for you to align your uh, sheet of stuff whatever you have to do okay all right and this is uh, pretty much all now i hope you found this video helpful uh, if you liked it click the thumb up button below if you have any comment leave them below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more video like this one ciao for now